Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Sabbath Services. What's going on in the world and what's happening? Well, there's a lot going on that's not even hitting the news. The excessive monsoon rains that are hitting China. So I'll read you a little bit about the news concerning that. And the biggest dam in the world, the Three Gorges Dam in China. They're wondering if it's going to collapse or not. 2020 has proven to be the worst Asian monsoon season in history. Wonder if this is a little payback by God for releasing the Wahoo virus on the whole world. Wuhan virus, rather. Rains total more than 200% of the last 11 years. But they are not alone. With addition to a massive flooding, is striking Japan, Vietnam, Cambodia, North and South Korea. But while there have been deaths and dislocations in many parts, none are as implacable, or impacted rather, as the Three Gorge Dam in China. The reservoir system makes up the Three Gorge Dam system past flood stage some six weeks ago, but they're getting another 10 to 12 inches this week. It is on the alert level of two. Level one is the worst. China has had to destroy more than two dozen smaller dams and levees to let floodwaters into the drainage basin. Guess what is the first big city east of that dam? Wuhan. Wuhan. So here's what's happening. Namely, into the foreign land so as to attempt to spare cities downstream from catastrophic flooding. Official numbers out of China are difficult to come by, but estimates from Taiwanese press indicate that as much as 50% of the agriculturally developed lands along the Yangtze River have endured some form of flooding in 2020. Millions of acres of agricultural land now sit under as much as nine feet of flood water. A little difficult to plant, you think? And will produce zero yield in 2020 and perhaps beyond. The Three Gorges Dam itself is in trouble. It had previously showed signs of settling and buckling that the Chinese government had tried to dismiss as distortions in satellite images due to pixelation. But more recent photos show further buckling in the key spillway section of the dam. Now think about that, the world's largest dam. If that breaks, that will set China back 20 years at least. Structural engineers from the King's College in London recently issued a dire warning to the UN that they believe that the dam is on the verge of a catastrophic collapse that could place millions of lives at risk. Well, not only that, they've had to destroy millions of cattle, millions of sheep. Previous to that, they had the, the uh, chicken flu virus. They had to kill millions and millions of chickens. And before that, they had the, the hog flu virus, so they had to kill many of those. And now the land is flooded, and they can't plant this year. Think of what that means. Now, think of this. They have 1.4 billion mouths to feed every day. Now that's why the purchases of Chinese agricultural purchases of American 
farm produce is up, it's not because they're keeping the phase one agreement. It's because they have no food. Think what that's going to be. And where are they going to get the next crop? Now, what would happen if next year America was inundated with floods and not able to have any, any crops here? How much could we sell to China? So that tells us that, you know, there may be quite a few years before Christ returns. Next week I'll have a little more to talk about that and why that is. It's rare for the Xing Hao to admit the Three Gorges Dam has deformed a little bit when holding storm water to protect downstream cities like Wuhan, as in the past state media would just choose not to report this or deny any talks about the dam being in any sort of danger. Here's an article on how much they have purchased. They have purchased twice the amount of agricultural products that they agreed to in the phase one treaty. So that tells you they're not getting any crops in China this year. Maybe some areas, and, and I, I've thought about this a lot. How many of you have seen the hills of China where they have rice paddies going like this around the hills? Okay, hill after hill. They have to do that because they don't have much flat land. What are you going to do when you have a lot of mountains? Well, that's what you have to do. What if there's so much rain it washes, what, hundreds of thousands of those little fields away? How are you going to build that back up again? Where are you going to get the dirt? Because that's all going to go downstream. So you see, it's not looking good for China. And I think that's one of the very reasons why Trump is being so aggressive against them, because he knows all of these things himself. Okay, here's another report. China opens up a Wuhan lab in Pakistan, and they're going to work on let me read it. Under the spotlight of after coronavirus savaged the globe, China's Wuhan lab has now set up operations in Pakistan as part of a broader offensive against India and Western rivals, according to intelligence experts. The secret facility is alleged to be making anthrax-like pathogens, which could be used in biological warfare. I want you to think about something. Why is all of this happening? Catastrophic things happening, just like it says there in Matthew 24. Okay? Because everyone on the globe is going to have to understand that human beings cannot run their lives properly without God and without his laws and commandments. They just can't do it. Now, they can muddle along and do pretty good if they follow along many of the things that are contained in the law, like it says in Romans 2.14. Okay. But that's why every Empire falls. Now, America is getting close to falling. The last six months are up now seven and a half months. Okay. We have virtually changed from a constitutional republic to a near communist organization, especially in the radical left, and look at what they've done to the cities. So America is sitting in a very precarious position itself. 
Think of the stupidity of what the Democrats are doing. No, I'm not taking sides. I'm just analyzing it. Of not being able to work out something to help the people, but they want trillions of dollars to rescue their failed states that were have been run by Democrats for decades. And I think the best thing to do is let them fail. They will never learn otherwise, nor will it be changed. Now, let's talk a little bit about how Satan operates. He comes with a proposition against God which seems reasonable and rational. Okay? He doesn't tell you the real motive behind it. And if you don't have the Word of God to rely on and see where it's wrong, you will never discover it until you get way down the road with a lot of trouble. Now, when it reaches a certain point, like we have here in America, we now have more witches than there are members of the Presbyterian churches in America. We have more atheists than any time in our history. We also have more direct Satanists. What do they believe in? Now you're going to see a vital weakness in the Constitution of the United States. See, when you read it, it all sounds really good. But just like the ones who wrote it said, this will only work with the people who are moral. It will not work when people are not moral. Another way of putting it. It will only work if people follow the principles of the Bible on which many of the things were founded in the Constitution and Bill of Rights. Okay? That has nothing to do with salvation. That's just operating the civil government. Now then, freedom of religion. Most countries, even communists, say freedom of worship, which means you do it in your own home. You can't get together in a group. Okay? Now, have you ever heard of the Satanic Temple? Okay? Guess what they believe in as a sacrament sacred to that religion. Abortion. Now, a lot of people say, well, who would have ever thought of that? Well, Satan doesn't come out and bring the most evil out first. He waits until he has enough people, till he has enough lawlessness, so he can bring it out in the open. And if you resist it, you're anti-religion. See? Quite a thing. So, what they want to do is challenge this in the courts. That since it is a sacred right for the church, which they acknowledge is a religion, think about what's going to happen. You just have to put your thinking cap on. Who is the most wishy-washy Supreme Court justice that we have? John Roberts. What was his latest vote to uphold abortion and not require the doctors doing it to be certified by a hospital nearby. Okay? Now then, 
if, you just have to look at it this way, if Trump loses the election, which the Democrats are doing everything in their power to do by mail-in votes, we will be a communist Venezuela before the end of the term of Biden. And we will also be the Western colony of China. And why? Let's look at it here. Let's come to Jeremiah 23. Let's see what we have here. Jeremiah 23 and verse 10. Now, always remember this, that God is long-suffering and not willing that any die. But the choice belongs to the people because he's given free moral agency to every human being. Okay? Well, what happens when you get rid of the laws of God? as the backbone of the laws of the nation, okay? Right here, verse 10, Jeremiah 23. For the land is full of adulterers, male and female. Because of swearing, the land mourns. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and burned every year because of the stupidity of people who think that you just let it grow wild. What did God tell Adam for the Garden of Eden? Let it grow wild. Let it have a lot of weeds. No, he said, dress it and keep it. Now the Germans, with their forest, they clean up all the debris on a regular basis so they don't have the stupid fires like we do. But you see, there are people who use the guise of something good. Oh, let it grow wild, knowing that it will destroy us. Their course is evil. Now, you think about that. You look at the Democrat platform, and it is evil. You look at the churches. They are evil. Okay? We'll cover that in just a little bit. Though they profess to be Christian. Okay? And they wield power unjustly. Isn't that true? Gang came into this community that had a gate in St. Louis, the Antifa Marxists, and a couple came out there, one with the husband had an automatic rifle, and the wife had a 45 caliber pistol, and told them, get off our property. Well, they let all the Antifas go and they indicted them. See? That's just the start. Okay? What have they done recently up in Portland? They burned Bibles. Okay? And the day's coming that anybody who really believes in the Bible is going to be beheaded. And they will think they're doing God's service. If you haven't read about the French Revolution recently, read about it. Because that's a mirror image of what the Democrats are doing to take down the nation. One commentator made, made this very interesting comment. He said, When you have an opposition party, most of them still love their country, okay? But in America, it's the opposite. 
They hate America. They hate God. Just like Trump said the other day, Biden doesn't believe in God. Even the Catholic Church to which he belongs refuses to give him mass or communion because of his stance on abortion. Okay? Next, verse 11. For both prophet and priest are ungodly. In my house, temple of God, I have found their evil says the Lord, okay? So their way shall be to them as slippery ways into darkness. They shall be driven on and fall in their way, for I will bring evil upon them even the year of their judgment. For I have seen repulsive things in the prophets of Samaria, they prophesied by Baal. Now, what is Baal? Sun worship. That's Sunday. That's what all of the so-called Christians of this world go by. And God's judgment is coming upon them because they laid the groundwork for all of this by doing away with the law. By saying that, as the Catholics do, that's the old law. No, the law that the Catholics have is the oldest law, Baalism. Okay? They shall be driven on and fall in their way, for I will bring even upon them even the year of their visitation. Okay? I've seen the repulsive things in the prophets of Samaria, they prophesied by Baal. They caused my people, Israel, to go astray. Okay. Now then, verse 14. I've also seen the prophets of Jerusalem, a horrible thing. They commit adultery. They walk in lies. They also strengthened the hand of evildoers. Judaism. Okay. Judaism. You read anything that the Jews write about their suffering and what happened at any time in history. You can go clear back to the destruction of the temple in 536 BC. And there's even a, a psalm by the rivers of Babylon Why have they suffered? Temple gone twice, second time, 70 AD, because they reject Christ. Okay? Not only reject him, but hate him and have their own Judaism religion. Now, that's worse than the Catholics and the Protestants. How many times have you heard a Jew say, all these evils have come upon us because of our sins? Never. Never. Not even in the psalm by the rivers of Babylon. They say, Jerusalem, we will remember you. Well, what about remembering God? Huh? His way. Okay? Let's come over here to, I, to uh, Jeremiah 19. Now, how many saw on the news last night? He was the, the black man that went into Trump's office and hugged him and all of that, while he's running for president, Kanye. And they showed a clip 
that he is the most outspoken against abortion of anyone in America publicly today. And he had a meeting he was talking to, and he was pray, pacing back and forth, and he kept it really direct. He said, my mama saved me. My daddy wanted me aborted, but my mama saved me. And then he said, and there have been 22 million black babies murdered. And of course, everyone knows. That's why Sanger set up the abortion clinics. Now, while many of the Protestants and Catholics are against abortion, they are not out there and neither are a lot of the churches of God out there, warning this nation, that's why we are coming down. And if Biden wins this election, all the freedoms that we have will evaporate one after the other, after the other after the other, okay? Here's why. Verse one, Jeremiah 19. Thus says the Lord, now you've heard me go through this before, but this is important to understand. Go get a potter's earthen jar and assemble there the rulers of the people and the elders of the priest, the important ones who rule and have the power. Now, this is what should be done with the Supreme Court and Congress, the Senate, and the President's thing, everybody together, and have this same kind of ceremony and tell them you are destroying this nation because of abortion. And go out to the valley of the son of Hinnom by the entry of the potsherd gate and declare these words that I shall tell you, the words of God. Now we'll talk more about the words of God a little later. Hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Israel and people of Jerusalem. Thus says the Lord God, the God of Israel, behold, I will bring evil upon this place. Have we been having evil? In the cities, looting, fire, burning, drugs, murder, sickness, the Wuhan plague. Stop and think. How much more can we take? Which will cause the ears of him who hears it to tingle. Because you have forsaken me. Remember what they did to Mike Lindell when he was there at the conference with the president? And he said, now's the time for us to get back to God and read our Bibles. And it didn't take much longer than that to do it. And the press went absolutely berserk. And they have profaned this place and have burned incense to other gods whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and they have filled this place with the blood of innocence. Now, let me tell you something. For every conception of human life, God is involved, whether it is in marriage or whether it is outside of marriage. Because God said it this way, that when the sperm from the father penetrates the egg of the mother, there's a sudden instantaneous charge of 450,000 volts, real quick, boom. What does that mean? That means the spirit of man for that individual God gave at that instant, okay? 
So all of this is against God for the pleasure of those who want to go against the laws of God and think that they can find their way better than God's way. They haven't read the third chapter of Genesis. Men's ways never can replace God's ways and work. They may for a while, but sooner or later, okay? Now, let's go back, hold your place here in chapter 19, and let's go back to Jeremiah 1 and verse 4. Jeremiah 1 and verse 4. And it came to pass, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. What does that mean? That means God knew Jeremiah at the instant of conception. Because immediately after that, it starts forming, right? So before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. So this shows that every human being conceived in the womb is a sacred gift from God made in his image. Okay. Now then, come back here to Jeremiah 19. What they did back in Jerusalem then was very interesting. Instead of abortion, they had a religious ceremony to bundle up the little child in nice sacrificial clothes and everyone would come. What a wonderful thing to, to give this little child to Moloch. And then they would place the child on the bronze arms of Moloch and then the priest of Moloch would pull a lever and the baby would be dropped into the inferno. That's how they did it then. Okay? Because you've forsaken me, profaned this place, have burned incense to other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and you filled this place with the blood of innocence. They've also built the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings to Baal, which I never commanded nor spoke, nor did it come into my mind. Okay. Now, does this not prove? Hold your place here. Turn back one page. Jeremiah 17, verse 1. The sin of Judah, we could put there, of America, is engraved with a pen of iron and a point of a diamond and is carved upon the tablet of their heart and on the horns of their altars. Okay? Now, come over here to verse 9. Why? Now, a lot of nice people, supposedly nice people. What is a nice person? Who judges what is nice? How does God judge what is nice? People judge by actions. God judges by thoughts. How many nice people, supposedly, are running around with evil thoughts in their minds? See? And that's the whole point of conversion, to have your mind changed from that to the mind of Christ. Verse 9, the heart is deceitful above all things. Oh, no, I'm a good person. Really? Do you love God? Well, uh, I don't know about that. Do you have a Bible? Well, yeah, no. Uh, did you ever read it? Uh, no. Well, if you don't read it, what are you doing? Think of this. Now, what is the Bible? It is the word of God to everyone who has the Bible. 
Now, if you don't read it, what are you doing? Whether by neglect or whether by fear or for whatever reason you may have of not reading it, okay? You're rejecting knowledge because this is the knowledge that you need to live the way God wants you to live and to understand about what God did for you through Christ coming and being the sacrifice for sin. Okay? You're not going to find it any place else. And God sent it. So what are you really doing if you don't read the Bible and if you don't believe the Bible? And we'll show why you need to in a little bit. You're rejecting God. How successful do you think you may be? All right? Deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Now notice the next verse. Because this tells you what God does and can do at any time to any person, anywhere, regardless of who you are, from the North Pole to the South Pole to the East and the West. I, the Lord, search the heart. How's your heart? What will he find? I try the reins. Now that means to see how you are thinking, to see what it is that motivates your way of living even to give to each man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So what do you think is going to happen because of all that we have done with abortion? 66 million. That makes Hitler look like kindergarten. Think of it. In the nation that says... God is the one we trust. So you think what God is going to do? I think what we're seeing is just a foretaste. Now back to Jeremiah 19, verse 6. Therefore, behold, the days come, says the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. That's what God thinks about Planned Parenthood. You know what their, their emblem is? You've seen it. It's a broken womb because they break it and kill the life. Take a break.